Um, good afternoon, my name's David Trotter. Um, I, I suppose I'm an entrepreneur stroke inventor. Um, I'm here today to talk about Muggy, which is something I invented about four years ago. Um, and um, I'm gonna hopefully give you a very brief in, you know, overview of how I came up with the idea, i.e. my light bulb moment, uh, which we can all have at some point. Um, a bit about the product and testing and development of the product to make it what it is today. Uh, a small piece about manufacturing, whether we manufacture in the UK or overseas, depending on what, what you're planning to make or what I'm currently making. And then a bit about sales, both domestic and um, overseas sales, and that's where the UKTI have helped me out a bit um, with the uh, sort of exporting side of my business, which is still relatively small. You know, I'm a very small, small fish in a huge pond of uh, the retail world, um, and this is just one of a number of market sectors that, that I sell Muggy into. Um, but hopefully a bit more of that will become slightly clearer um, as I go through. Uh, so I've entitled this um, Waves to Wheelchairs, uh, which is a title my 22-year-old daughter um, wrote for me because she loves, I think it's iteration, if that's the right word. Um, I'm not that educated, but uh, she, she came up with the title for me. And it's um, summing up where Muggy started, which was on the, the high seas of the English Channel. Well, it all started about three years ago, um, sailing with a friend of mine, Tony. Uh, lovely sunny day, coming back from France. It got a bit stormy, and he said, um, sort my mugs out, Trotsky. Started to come up with some ideas. Got home and made this prototype out of uh, neoprene rubber. Sent it back to Tony the, the weekend after, and uh, I got a text back saying, yippee, it works. And uh, this is where it all started. A uh, piece of rubber allowing mugs to uh, ride safely in a sink, and then you can carry them one-handed um, up to the top of the, the galley. So uh, that was it to start with. There we go. So we got rid of that fairly quickly and built some prototypes in foam, and uh, we then came up with this little baby. And uh, this is what we're selling at the moment. But as you know, life moves on, we wanted to get something uh, even better. Here's a sneak preview of the new Muggy, which is better, more, more features, and it's gonna be cheaper, and it's gonna be available soon. I don't really see myself as an inventor. Um, I have loved the outdoors, and I love building stuff. I just I love bringing together different technologies from different industries, combining them to hopefully provide a solution to a problem. Um, Muggy is, I suppose, uh, my first major invention, if that's uh, want of a better word. Had some fairly highfalutin ideas of wonderful um, uh, gunmetal and uh, small shock absorber type designs, but it cost a fortune. So Muggy is much more of a mass market solution to a problem. I am very patriotic, and I'm a great believer in making stuff in the UK to export it. And I want to export Muggy all over the world. We're already exporting to the continent and also to Australia, as well as throughout the UK. Um, and we're about to export to the, the States in big numbers, hopefully, with the new Muggy. And I'm a great believer in trying to bring back some of the manufacturing skills that, well, they're already here in the UK, they just aren't used enough. And a lot of people are bringing business back from the Far East to Cornwall, a lot, a, lot, a lot to the West Country, I think, to bring back the use of the skills that we've got here in this country. And I will make Muggy in the UK for as long as it's physically possible. And I don't see any reason why I should go overseas. Um, working with a great company here in Kent, they have been so supportive of me coming into this industry from complete uh, novice point of view. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that we're going to see Muggy in every walk of life that you can think of where you have a cup of tea, be it in the, um, you know, all the yachts around the world, but also in the market, in the, uh, in the workspace. Um, very, very successful show recently in the health and safety industry. And I was completely swamped for three days. Absolutely unbelievable reaction to the product people seem to absolutely love it. And it solves two or three of their problems that they meet on a daily basis. So um, health and safety 
is all around the world, sailing is all around the world. We're now able to make a product that's below £10, and I believe that the camping, caravanning, and kind of uh, festival world, where, they, you know, where you're trying to carry cups of coffee around, even football matches, rugby matches, you try and carry four pints of beer in those flimsy, squidgy glasses. Yes, you might get a cardboard um, carrier that if it gets wet, it falls apart, and you throw it away, and it creates lots of waste. OK, you've got a one-off purchase of a muggy. might even be a promotional item. But once you've got it, it's yours for life. Well, we've just arrived in uh, Whitstable in the uh, injection moulding factory and about to see the first muggies coming off the line. So um, I'm very overexcited, I think, is the terminology. They're still hot, straight out of the oven. They're literally hot. They, yeah, really hot. Um, wow. I am chuffed to bits. Oh, I'm so, so impressed. Nice finish, doesn't weigh very much. Ready for its little feet. And uh, there's the logo in the middle. Hopefully that um, gives you a, a rough idea of where it all started um, on a boat sailing back from France. I hasten to add, not my boat, someone else's. Um, just very briefly, um, I suppose, you know, the, the life of a, a, an entrepreneur or, or a, um, an inventor uh, in, in a very small package. Um, this is me here, um, the day I got engaged to my lovely wife. Um, we were in the boat at the time when I asked her, and she said yes, otherwise she'd have been over the side. But uh, I was briefly in the army, um, I suppose, learning to kill people, but I hasten to it, I've never actually killed anybody. Um, then I moved into the, the sort of exhibition live events world and uh, we used to launch Ford cars back in the 80s. I had the pleasure of interviewing Richard Branson and Jackie Stewart, both sirs now I suppose, um, a long time ago back in the 80s. We did the BT launch of the tower and the code change etc. Um, I'm in my spare time I'm one of the Queen's bodyguards up in Scotland which is, which is quite fun and I try and sail whenever I can which isn't very often. Uh, this is my new product, which I just wanted to mention because I, I have more than one product. And uh, in the background of all this, I build tree houses. So that, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is hopefully my light bulb moment, which we've almost uh, covered already. But I'd like to just mention one or two other products uh, that I've come across over the last two, three years while I've been journeying um, in my muggy world. Um, who are, have done a similar thing to me, you know, had an idea, had a light bulb moment, come up with a product and are desperately trying to get it out into the market because it's, it's pretty tough. Um, a little bit about the product testing and development, um, what we can do about manufacturing, whether we manufacture in this country or possibly overseas, and then, as I mentioned, um, sales here and overseas. Um, if you come up with a, a light bulb moment, you've, um, you've basically got to make sure that it's going to change people's lives. Otherwise, there's not really much point in doing it. Um, something I read here from a chap called Sidney Friedman, uh, you can achieve anything you want to in life. If you have the courage to dream it, the intelligence to make a realistic plan, and the will to see the plan through to the end, which is, is all pretty basic stuff, but um, Launching into creating something, uh, you know, is a big financial step. It's a big mental step, uh, and can be quite exhausting. So, there's a certain amount of kind of um, risk assessment required, both your own financial situation uh, and that in your family. Um, and I've got in here mental, physical, and financial because it affects your whole life and it affects everyone else's lives around you. So, um, make sure you've got a good support network. Um, before you launch yourself out on a mad scheme, whatever it is. Um, you've got to completely and utterly believe in what you're doing because at the start, no one else will. And you, you find people every day saying, you're, you're balmy, why on earth are you doing that? Why are you doing this? Um, but you've, so long as you've got that plan in the back of your mind, hopefully one day it's all gonna come true or come through. So um, this is pretty important here, is, is total self-belief. 
Uh, and again, that, that comes from you know, your close friends and, and, uh, and family. Developing a, or creating a new product is, um, is, is an enormous step. And the, the simpler you can keep your processes, um, the better. Um, I work on the fact of, of keeping thing pretty, everything pretty simple and straightforward. And I'm not sure you can get much simpler than a muggy. Um, you know, it, it kind of does what it does uh, in a number of environments. And um, it's not trying to be too clever or complicated, I hope. Being uh, an inventor, um, you know, it's a pretty lonely place. I've already mentioned that, you know, people think you're completely mad. Um, so you, you have to be very resilient in yourself um, and um, basically just keep slogging along. There are lots, I've got in here 3D printing and prototyping. Um, it's, it's something that is coming on in leaps and bounds um, in, the, in the, the, the manufacturing world. It, it was in its early stages when I did Muggy. Um, but nowadays, you could print a Muggy probably overnight if you, you know, if, you, if you really wanted to. And it's very, very quick and relatively cheap. If you've got an idea to um, stick it on a computer, press the button, and hey presto. Once you've got your prototype, You've, you've got to test it and test it and test it. We did a lot of, lot of testing. Um, the original product was made of foam, uh, but it was quite an expensive thing to make. So I, I had this goal of um, trying to uh, make a product that was more affordable to everybody. And 10 pounds was my sort of figure to aim for. And that's when we went down the plastic injection molding route. Um, we've now got this full range of colors, including the blue. Um, just about to launch the, the green and the orange, and I might ask for some feedback at the end of the, the talk, if I may. But uh, you know, you've got to, to work out whether or not your idea is ticking all the boxes for your potential customers. And at the moment, you know, all, all of my original thinking was to make muggies and sell them to people with boats. That's all I was trying to do. So um, I was just trying to keep it simple. Um, Then you come to the point that once you're making, you want to make the thing, where are you going to make it? Now, with a plastic product, everyone was saying, you've got to go to China, you've got to go overseas. And I was saying, well, why? And um, that's when I came across this uh, company in the UK, um, based over in Whitstable, who are a plastic injection molding company. And they were just so helpful in working through the, all the pitfalls and, and, and helping me out with the design and the tooling and all the rest of it. It just, it just seemed a, a no-brainer to me to man try and manufacture this in the UK, which means, yes, it is slightly more expensive probably than taking it to China, but um, I've got far, far more control over the manufacturing of the colors, of any problems that I have. I can just drive to Kent and have a chat. I don't have to fly to China. Um, and, and the products come out of Kent correct. They're not half damaged and, and crushed in a container halfway across the Indian Ocean. So um, I was fairly quickly convinced that um, UK manufacturing was the route to go. And hence, um, I promote the UK as much as, as possible. And hence that li little logo down here. This is the Made in Britain logo. It's a non-profit organization. I thoroughly recommend getting involved with it. Um, I like the logo anyway, but it's, it's just some way of us small manufacturers waving the flag for Britain and helping us get out of recession. And I suppose we're out of it now, but get out of it a bit, a bit further than we were. We, um, we now make it in a plastic injection molding um, process uh, in a massive tool. It's about a meter square of steel over in, in Kent. Um, and the company I'm working with is a lovely company called SK Engineering. And, you know, if anyone's got any thoughts of doing stuff in plastic, I thoroughly recommend them. Small family business. They all do everything from driving the forklifts to squirting plastic into, into the molds. Um, very reliable, great fun to work with, which is something I'll come on to again is, you know, if you're going to do this, make sure that you're enjoying it and having fun. Um, otherwise, <laughs> there's really not a lot of point. We... Um, we currently do these four colors, uh, which we, I've shown you here. This is something I learned from the UKTI, uh, which I think is on my next slide, hopefully. Yeah, a bit of a UKTI there. But um, they run a, 
I hope they still run, uh, a course called Passport to Export. Yes, they do, which is well, well worth it. You know, if you're thinking about exporting, it's, um, I think it's two days in a hotel somewhere um, with, a, a, you know, food and a little bit of drink in the evenings. And uh, it, you, know, you meet up with another dozen or so similar type uh, businesses to yours um, who are looking to move into exporting. And they talk you through the pitfalls. And the one thing I remember there was this stop, look, and listen thing. And I remember drawing a great big traffic light at the, in my final presentation. And it's, it's this whole thing of, do I really need to export? Um, and I, I mentioned earlier about selling in the UK first, uh, rather than going immediately for the, the global domination kind of overseas sales. So it, it's, I can't emphasize that bit more than you know, uh, enough, uh, is really take stock of what you're doing if you've got to the, the sales point and um, just really consider whether or not you need to export because not everyone does. Um, and in all reality, I probably don't, but I do like exporting. So I, I'm going to continue for my world domination. Just very quickly, um, you know, I'm talking from a small um, organization's point of view. Muggy is me. I don't have a sales force. I don't have a PR department. I don't have a distribution, etc. cetera. Um, all, the all the distribution and uh, manufacturing is done from the same factory, which is great. They manufacture and they send them out for me. Um, PR and advertising, I'd always go for PR, personally, if you're going to ask me. Advertising, I'm getting a nod from a, a fellow small business owner there. Uh, advertising is expensive and it's for the big boys, I think. Just, you know, keep the brand awareness out there. Us little people, we've got to get out there like this. This is a great opportunity for me. And again, thank you, UKTI, just to blether on. And thank you for listening. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, so I'd go for PR and that I mean kind of live PR, so live stuff. Again, I've said it there again, you know, get good solid sales in the UK before you try to um, jump across the channel. Um, internet sales, absolutely essential nowadays. You know, got to get a website up there and, you know, your um, children will probably build a website for you um, faster than, than anyone else. And then I'm just reiterating the, the why export bit. Um, <laughs> my export strategy um, was um, sell a muggy to every boat in the world. And I suppose in my heart of hearts, that's why I created Muggy. But Things have, um, have changed a lot over the last uh, three years. Um, exporting is expensive, um, you know, if you're going to go out and meet suppliers and, and, and that sort of thing. We currently uh, export to about eight countries in the, in the EU. Um, we've got a couple of distributors in the Middle East, UAE, which is an interesting market. Um, New Zealand, um, we are in the uh, motorhome and caravan and sailing industry. Um, and then we're just about to get into the US in a, um, a kind of health and safety type market. And why I've thrown myself is that I've missed a slide completely, just to mention that we, we sell into probably six or seven different market sectors. Obviously the sailing world is my, was, my, was my primary market. We then went into the motorhome and caravan industry we then moved into health and safety in offices and factories. Um, we're into the narrow boat world. You can't get more stable than narrow boat, but they still love muggies in there. And now, um, as of last year, we're now selling into your industry, which if you asked me three years ago, would I be selling muggies to people in wheelchairs? I'd have said, no, of course not. This is for boats. Um, but I think it's probably going to be my largest market, um, both uh, whether, whether it's people in wheelchairs, whether it's people with MS, whether it's people with Parkinson's or tremor or arthritis, all those areas um, we, we sell muggies to. And I sell them on a daily basis to people personally when they phone up and try and, you know, and buy them from me with a credit card over, over the phone. So th that's, this is my kind of journey of um, all the areas that uh, we're into. Um, these guys here... Um, I met at the Arthritis UK research project last year, you know, all suffering from arthritis, and it just shows it can hit anyone of any age and, and even younger. Um, muggy here in a, in a Buckingham caddy. It fits as though I designed it for it, not that I did, but um, it works really well on top of a, of, of a walker. A little um, kitchen tidy here. Um, obviously, tea and biscuits in the office 
always very uh, very useful and um, herbs and uh, narrowboat so uh, it's sort of starting to get into lots of different um, parts of people's lives and I think once people see it and have used it they, they kind of think why haven't I had this before and uh, my role as, as Mr. Muggy is to try and alert people to the fact that it exists and anything that anyone can do to help with that would be gratefully received. I've almost finished, so um, please bear with me. Um, this is just linking back to something that Richard Branson um, has said. He didn't say it to me, but I, I do kind of keep this in the back of my mind, and, and it works really well for an entrepreneur of his scale or an entrepreneur of my scale. And, you know, accept total responsibility. If, if, if I or you don't take control of what you're doing, no one else is going to. So, um, you know, it, the buck kind of does really does stop with you. Attention to detail, again, if, if you don't keep on top of the little things that just quietly are going wrong, you know, if the feet start falling off your off my muggy, then, you know, people aren't going to be very pleased. Um, so, you know, we change the feet after the first week and a half. Um, I like to think that I'm delivering outrageous value. Um, Muggy now sells for 9.95, which I think in this industry, people look at me and say, well, that's far too cheap. Everything seems to be so expensive in this industry. Um, but um, I'm sure it's all very good value. Uh, hopefully, Mug is even better value than, than normal. Um, never stop improving. Um, I am working on a better Muggy that is um, going to be cheaper. It's going to be lighter. And it's going to be brandable in a, in a sort of mass market way. This is a, um, a current muggy that we've um, recently branded up for a company called Holiday Extras. They sell you um, car parking and insurance and bits and pieces once you've booked your holiday. But they, they use these in their offices for carrying cups of tea about to stop them falling all, all, all over the floor. So we can now br brand muggies as well. So if you had an organization, you know, wanted Parkinson's UK on here or made to aid muggies, uh, we can do that for you. So it's a little um, extra addition. But we, as I say, we are working and looking at developing a muggy that's, um, again, made in the UK, but uh, will be a brandable um, product, possibly for the likes of Costa, Starbucks, you know, in, in the bigger world, which would be nice. Um, but also, it would obviously still work in, in your industry with, um, you know, people carrying it one-handed or, or putting it on their, on their laps, et cetera, in a wheelchair. Keep having fun. Um, I mean, I love coming along, and I've, I've met you know half a dozen people I've met over the last year, and it's great to catch up with people and see how their journeys have improved or changed as we keep going along, and um, and, and just keep moving, keep moving forward, keep thinking of the next thing that's going to help help people's um, daily lives. Um, I just whacked this slide in this morning um, because I haven't had a muggy back in four years. So um, I'm trying to promote that it's guaranteed for life because everything nowadays is throw away, buy another one, da da da. And I just hate that that sort of outlook on life, and that's really why I've made Muggy so completely indestructible. And um, you know they really are completely indestructible. So as of today or even yesterday, Muggy is guaranteed for life. Um, spread the word and uh, spread the Muggy love. Brian! 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 Oh! I've been calling you! Oh, you want to turn your hearing aid on next time? <laughs> <laughs>